Las Vegas, many people come here to live the dream, but for Andre Agassi and Steffi Graf, it's a place they call home. On planet Vegas, the sun shines. It's a unique town. Then again, Andre and Steffi are a unique couple. Both were child prodigies, both were phenomenally successful. Hi, pleasure, pleasure to meet you. Real pleasure to meet you. How long you know, did you fancy her for then before you were really able to ask her out? Nine years. <laughs> Between them, they've won 30 Grand Slam singles titles, and Andre's one of only five players in history to have won all four majors. Is he okay? Borderline. <laughs> <laughs> But if that's good, Steffi's record is out of this world. She won 22 Grand Slam singles titles and is the only woman ever to win the Big Four in one year. No notes or anything. You're pretty prepared. Now happily retired, Andre and Steffi granted me a rare interview at the Agassiz Prep School, which, along with their two children and Steffi's foundation, form a huge focus in their lives. We've got a nice little setup in one of the classrooms. We'll follow so. you. Lead the way. On the court, they were ruthless, but their courtship had to wait. They were crowned Wimbledon champions in 92, but a break with tradition didn't help their love match. That was the first year, if I'm not mistaken, they sort of banned the dance. They said, well, the players sort of took issue with it over the years, so they, they didn't have it that night. So I, you were, I worked them real hard to cancel <laughs> that. Yeah. So you were disappointed there was no dance. I was looking and forward to were you relieved? her across the desk. Oh, yes, <laughs> because I was practicing with my brother, and it was one of those things I've never learned how to dance the proper way. So he taught me a couple steps because he did, and uh, and it just it wasn't pretty. So I wasn't looking forward to that in that sense. <laughs> so fate intervened, really, and you didn't get you didn't get to have your first dance then. Let's dance. It's difficult to know what to say about Andre Agassi. And you know there hasn't ever been a player quite like Andre Agassi. Andre Agassi, brash 21-year-old from Las Vegas. Andre, Andre, Andre. A fine tennis player. I just wish he'd tidy up a little bit. What did you think of each other at that time? What did you know of each other? Um, she was a step in the right direction for me, and I probably was a step in the wrong direction for her back then. I don't know. No, I was. I listen. I I thought the world of Steph for a long time. When you don't know somebody, you you only can respect sort of certain things. Obviously, the the beauty that you see, but beyond that, just you know how her life was shaped, the disciplines mm. in it, the relationships and the loyalties, and you know there's things you look at that get your attention. Steffi had phenomenal success throughout her 17 years as a professional. She won a staggering 107 career titles, making the sport look so easy at times. She could reduce even the biggest names to tears. Athleticism allied with precision and power, Fraulein Forehand, as she was known, ruled on all surfaces. In 1999, the year she retired, Steffi won the French Open, her final Grand Slam victory. The same year in Paris, Andre won the men's title. So everything was set up. Time for Cupid to fire his arrow. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a bit of destiny in certain certain senses. I mean, what happened there in Paris was kind of magical for for both of us in many ways. But uh, but we got to spend time together that summer, and and it, it sort of all went really went from there. quick from there. Really fast. Yeah, the relationship obviously very quickly produced. Mm -hmm. Your first child, then. Mm -hmm. So you know, that's you know. I think people, when they heard that you were a union, it was just like, oh, brilliant! It's one of those kind of like, oh, what a great idea to get those two together, um, and, and a perfect time in many ways as well in your life. You're coming to the end of your tennis career. What was she like when she first retired? How does she adapt to retirement? Well, th th this is a good question because uh, I didn't really know her so well before retirement because we just sort of. Thing. Which is, yeah, and according to her <laughs> and everybody around. I was going to say, would the relationship have worked if you'd both been on the tours? No. It would have been very, very difficult. Very yeah. You know, I always considered myself a moody person, you know, and then I realized when I retired that it's not, not really me. It's like tennis is moody, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Tennis is so demanding, and, and timing in life, as everybody sort of knows and probably has experienced one way or another, is, is everything. You've quietly laid down your racket to pursue love and motherhood with the same zeal and high standards you have always demanded of yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you the greatest person I've ever known, Stephanie Graff. Well, I can tell, I mean... Oh. <laughs> Not that this occasion isn't emotional enough, but um, to 
to, to, to hear that you loved so much is amazing. The timing was perfect in the sense that she had all those sort of dramas behind her and, uh, and she was like On smooth. another yeah. journey in yeah. many ways. But, but Looking obviously, forward to that journey. And, but then you had to kind of, I suppose, become part of Yeah, Andre's I didn't expect to be you know? back uh, <laughs> on the tour or the tennis circuit again. That wasn't quite in the plans for my future. One of the things about your tennis career was this kind of like roller coaster love affair with tennis, whether mm. you loved it or whether you didn't. It's kind of like oh, a, sure. a real love-hate relationship with the uh, sport. I think there are times you feel that way. Um, depending on what side of the bed you wake up on. I mean, you know, it, it does ask a lot from you, and it does take a lot from you, but, but it also gives you a lot. I mean, you get to discover a lot about yourself, and, and you get to sort of, uh, you know, uh, answer questions that, uh, that uh, you didn't even know, you, you know, pe normal people don't even ask themselves. Steffi Graf is Andre's constant companion. He's so settled now and so happy. After getting together in Paris, Steffi would have to get used to watching Andre play because while she retired, he went on to win another four Grand Slams, taking his career total to eight. His final major came in Melbourne in 2003, the year he also became, at 33, the oldest world number one in history. I don't know what else to say except... <laughs> Somebody asked me for a comment on hey, Steffi. Hey, I don't talk about your wife. <laughs> At least as far as you know. <laughs> I enjoyed being there and, and kind of watch it from a different angle. Were you able to be there purely as his wife or did you have to get involved with tennis? Did you kind of like, <laughs> no? No, I mean, the, sure, there's moments where you talk about it because you, it's been my life and, uh, you know, and even probably able to, to assess um, situations during a match or after a match probably better than most so but I think just talk but it's it's just nothing that I feel like more so than things that you talk about when you know what the other one does so intimately mm. it's more about the things that you really don't have to say you know there's an understanding without having to say a whole lot so that, that there's a level of underlying support that you get as a result of that which is it's pretty cool because it's not it's not easy out there and then when your son came along and, you know, having a son when you're playing, that must be a whole different thing to deal with as well, mentally. Oh, sure. Just even getting from one tournament to another took on a whole different... <laughs> the logistics. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 nights, the pace and the, the, yeah. the sleep and the lack of... Did you have to have separate and, hotel rooms then in certain tournaments? Well, uh, certain nights I would sort of be served to, to venture Just somewhere else. Give a release pass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, but... Uh, but it came with such a beauty too though. I mean mm. one of the great things about having a child out there in that pressure world is that you so can so quickly forget about your your bad days and your mm. good days really. Mm. You come home and it just it just feels like it's right and so that helps you with your longevity in some respect because you don't sort of live with those sufferings quite as long when you get to come home to a little one yeah. who's counting on you. Mm. Well, the, the scoreboard said I lost today but what the scoreboard doesn't say is what it is I have found. Over the last 21 years, I have found you, and I will take you and the memory of you with me for the rest of my life. Thank you. Did he quickly adapt to becoming an ex-player at home? Oh yeah, very. Um, it seemed a pretty easy transition for me, and I kind of felt that it was going to be for him. You weren't quite as sure how easy it's going to be for you, but it just seemed something that just was just an easy transition for it was as it well. was like uh, I, I describe it like Christmas every day it was like wait a second I don't have to do this I don't have I don't I can my, I, I, can, hang, that way. I can hang my clothes. it was it, I, I, I felt uh, I felt liberated I just the felt sacrifices were gone and yeah the, 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 stress, the, the emotions, physical the, the mental the demands. emotional the logistical, just always looking at your your year and working backwards from some particular place you have to be. And what would drive you crazy is not the training you'd have to do, but even the times where you sort of were forced to rest. You're like, but this is the time to go out on the beach with your kids or to do this or to do that. And you're like, well, no, can't be in the sun. You can't, you know, just all the little things that, you know, get you primed and ready to go at certain, at certain moments. And... Uh, I was excited to not have to worry about any of that anymore. So everybody that knew we were coming to Vegas, they knew you grew up in Vegas, but what they hadn't banked on was that you persuaded your wife <laughs> that she should live in Vegas and bring your children from Vegas. How did you manage to do that? Well, I, I see I had this strategy. I, I went after her mother first and got her mother to move here and sort of brought in and talked to her whole family to come in. 